Hello everybody, it's Van Berman here. Welcome back to another podcast. This is the second of the new age podcast, so to speak. So once again, I didn't write down any topics about what I want to talk about, so I'm just going to be going off cuff, talking about all sorts of different things, and really going from from there. So one of the big things that I've been looking to get into recently is looking at Adobe with its Premiere Pro and After Effects and all that sort of good stuff. I've been mainly looking at that today, and there's lots of really neat stuff that you can do with it. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not sort of bashing on Windows Movie Maker or Sony Vegas, you know, they both have their advantages. You know, Windows Movie Maker is really good in its own right because it's so lightweight, you know, you can pretty much run it on any computer, and it does give you, you know, the very, very basic tools in order to be able to create something, you know, that looks like a video. Uh, it's also pretty good for, you know, slideshows and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, okay, it may not be as intuitive as, you know, Sony Vegas or anything like that. It'll give you anywhere near as many options and effects, but you can still do a... You can still make decent enough videos of it, don't get me wrong, at all. And I've used it quite happily for many years, and I must say it is, you know, for what it is, being a free program as well, really good. Uh, then sort of moved on to uh, Sony Vegas... And looking at that, I had 13 on the, well, for the Steam version. And then I got 14 when it came out in the Humble Bundle. So, uh, yeah, you know, I've spent a lot more time with that now. It's sort of reminiscent of, you know, how Windows Movie Maker used to be back in the day where you used to have the different tracks. Um, but it does a lot of things really well. There's, you know, there's pretty much you can do everything with it effectively. Uh, you don't really need, I would say, Sony Vegas is the tool that you should at least aspire to use for, you know, creating your YouTube videos over, you know, Windows Movie Maker. Um, Windows Movie Maker is a good, good start on and good to, you know, progress up from. And then now I've started, <laughs> I've opened a can of worms now by getting uh, Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects. But there's so many different things that you can do compared to the other two. It's basically like the complete next step up from Sony Vegas. And yeah, I mean, I've just been absolutely blown away watching hours or an hour, probably, of tutorials so far, though it probably will be hours by the time you listen to this particular podcast. So, yes, there's, you know, it's just, it seems like the possibilities are almost endless with uh, the Adobe stuff, even though a lot of the stuff that you want to do can, can be replicated in Vegas, and Vegas has a good footing, and it will always be something that I will champion um, Sony, so don't worry. <laughs> but yeah, After Effects and Premiere Pro are just next level. And I don't know if there will be if I'll be doing every video with Premiere Pro now, but I will definitely be looking to do as many as possible, just purely because um, you know I want to try and learn that now and coming sort of off Vegas. Even though I'm not going to lie, I was never ever a pro at Sony Vegas at all. I was just just about competent with being able to do pretty much everything that I wanted to. Whereas now that there is so much more scope with the Adobe platform, I want to, you know, take more time and look at that one. So for example, or the key, or one of the key examples will be, I, in the last video, the last podcast video, I wanted to do the sound bars on um, Vegas. Now that doesn't come as standard, you, you know, I had to download some plugins to be able to get that to work and it had varying degrees of success. It wasn't as intuitive as it could have been. Now I'm going to be doing importing this podcast into Premiere Pro. Now I came up across a fair few tutorials while I was looking at get, uh, putting it through on Sony Vegas and it seems like it's so much more intuitive and built into um, Prem, um yeah, Premiere Pro on the Adobe platform. So this should look visually, even though obviously I'm just doing it as a podcast, a lot more aesthetically pleasing than the, the previous one. So that's my hopes. Obviously, if that doesn't work out and I end up putting this over, I end up just putting a blank, you know, background or something like that over this, then you'll know that I wasn't able to do it. <laughs> but, you know, it's all good fun. You've got to sort of 
push yourself to try and learn these things and you know push yourself out of your comfort zone as well so you might see coming up in videos maybe not immediately but later on down the line where I'm trying out new effects or I'm trying out new techniques on Adobe which is one of the things that I most likely will be doing and yeah you know so they may not exactly fit with the theme of the video or whatever it happens to be but for me it's a good you know learning curve and it sort of gets me more involved in you know messing around with different effects or different transitions or whatever you know the wherever the road may take me so to speak um, so yeah, that's been one of the big things I've been thinking about recently. Uh, also cameras and videos and lighting, all that sort of stuff has been very prevalent in my thoughts over the past couple of weeks. So one of the best things that I did in regards to my photography, especially my, well, it pretty much is my indoor photography, my indoor videography is, videographer? Videography? I don't know if that's a word. Um, is to buy the light, so like a studio light. Now it didn't cost me the earth, it was £21 off of eBay, came with the 135 watt um, daylight bulb, and you know, it's, it's got diffuser on it as well, and it really does increase the quality at least, you know, a good 20%, um, and it makes the videos look just incredibly better. Um, you know, allows that much, it allows the camera to get that much more light in um, from the surroundings. That everything just looks clear. You don't get all like the the noise. I think it's called noise. Um, that you know that you get in other videos. So if you look at my some of my especially older videos that I've taken, uh, especially the ones where I did the graphics cards. If you look at them and look at the footage that I took from from those ones, and you look at any of the vlogs I've done recently where I've had the light on, there's been, you know, an absolute, it's night and day difference almost, I feel. Which is why now that I really want to do the video on my main computer, because I've got the light and I feel as though, you know, I'll be actually be able to do it some justice, hopefully. We'll see. But that's the plan. That's what I want to do going forward. Well, at some point, I want to do that. I also have, like, a couple of project videos that I never actually finished I got all the information for and then all the footage and never actually put it into a video so you know there's other things that there that I can do I mean I'm not really sure where I'm going with the channel but it doesn't really matter you know I'll just continue doing what it is that you know I feel like I want to do and yeah just basically taking it from there really to be honest I did get a message so I'm just going to check that uh, ah okay Fair enough, nothing too important to uh, to say, but we do have, or I am in the middle of doing my vlog, the new one, which is going to be profoundly boring, but I think, I've been made, I think I may have made it that way on purpose, so I've realised that if I release some very, very boring vlogs to start off, sorry, vlogs to start off with, then when I do release one that is of any interest, you know, people are like, wow, you've really changed things up and you've made it so much better when, yeah, when actually in reality it's just like a you know, an average vlog, so to speak. Um trying to think what there is really to say about gaming. Although, you know, because obviously that's one of the things I do. In fact, this is probably the longest I've ever spoken on YouTube without mentioning a game. That is incredible. So, recently I've gone back to playing a lot of Fallout, Fallout 4 in particular. And, you know, just playing the bits that I didn't do, well, like just carrying on from my main game that I didn't do the first time around. And I've not even got any of the DLC at all. I mean, I personally quite enjoy the settlement building, and uh, some of the packs do look pretty good for, you know, the settlement building, and some of the stuff people have built with it has been really, well, quite inspiring, to be honest. But I'm not willing to buy it at its retail price. I'll wait until the summer sale comes out, and I'll just sort of go from there. I'll probably pick, it, I'll probably pick up a season pass for Fallout and get all the DLC if it's a decent price. I mean, I can imagine it'll probably have, what, 30-40% off, hopefully. Um, or maybe even, if I'm really lucky, it might get half price as well. So what would that make it, like £15, 15 pounds for the season pass for the DLC? Now, that would be incredible. <laughs> because then I can go through and play the, the Nuka World and the Automatron. And then, uh, you know, I want a different theme for each settlement. So at some point, I might actually make a video showing you the settlements that I've built. But all the ones I've built have all been using vanilla assets. Uh, other than one of the mods that I installed, which was for solar panels. Which is incredible, because they make no noise. You know, I always hate the sound of the generators. or And the windmills are just so big and obnoxious. Whereas the solar 
solar panels you can literally just stick anywhere and it'll give you three or five power and then you can and it actually you know if you put it in sensible places it actually looks quite good as well you know on rooftops or wherever so yeah that's nice to see that's a good addition um in terms of mod you know that you can add i try to tend to stay away from anything that's too broken in terms of mods in terms of that would make the game too easy um you know which is why i'm very particular especially when it comes to things like weapons how much i want to know how much base damage they do i want to know what their potential is to you know for doing damage and then you know from there you can work out um you know if it's worth if it would be applicable to the game so i did download one and i can't remember the name of it at all um, apologies about that. I'll mention it when I, if and when I do this video. Um, but that rifle is really cool, um, and I was pretty happy with the the damage it puts out. You know, you can modify it to being pretty strong. Although, having said that, two of the guns that I do have, I've got bang bang and the end. The latter is a sniper rifle. The form, uh, sorry, the latter is a shotgun. The former is a sniper rifle. You know, and they do over two hundred damage each because they've got the legendary effect of shoots an extra protect projectile. So you get double the damage effectively, which makes them almost in the right circumstances pretty much always one shot kill for a lot of stuff. So you know that is quite overpowered anyway. But they're the stuff that I found organically, so I don't feel as though there's an issue with them. But anything that I add in that could have that effect is where the issue arises. So the Steam Spring Sale is it a sale or is it just an event? Uh, quick scrambling to try and find out on the computer. Uh, Steam, let's have a look. So, oh, it's, it's the event. Okay, fair enough. So, there's although there are sales around it as well. So, it gets you to do like a load of different stuff, like look back through your um, Steam library. It gives you, you know, different tasks to go and to go and do, and you know, new games to explore, effectively. And I did make a video on that, which you better find on my channel, where I talk through, go through all that. But the point I wanted to make in the podcast is that I think it's just a really cool idea. You know, it's something that is probably a lot, well, it's definitely a lot better than any of the other stuff Steam has tried to do in the past. Uh, so that is, in of itself, is actually really cool. And yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, actually quite surprised that Steam have come up with such an intuitive way of, you know, getting you to spend more time on Steam effectively. And of course the game the free or the games that are free for the weekend that they want you to try all on sale as well. So you play it and you think, you know what, I actually quite like this. And then, you know, they get a bit of a sale, but it's uh, they get a sale and you get a sale because it will be I think they're all about fifty percent off, if not more. So although they are older games, which, you know, to be fair, is probably about where it should be in terms of the whole you know event style of things the pro the project the project things <laughs> i digress anyway all i've got to say is yeah i mean i think that's about it i don't think there's anything more to talk about oh there is one more little thing to talk about so um next month there's the wwe uk championship from the royal albert hall in london and I am looking forward to watching that from the comfort of my flat. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, a, I'm not really too keen on wrestling. There's a couple of wrestlers that I do like, and I really appreciate the athleticism that a lot of the guys show. It's honestly just incredible when you see. It's, that's the thing. When you're a kid, you're in it because you, you know, you love the characters, and you know, you just love the, you know, the whole ethos around it. And then when you get older, you start to enjoy the athleticism and all the other stuff that goes around. Around, you know that go, you know that goes with it, like the char the charisma, the promos, all that sort of stuff. And uh, one of the guys who I'm a really big fan of now, and for just over a year as well, is Pete Dunne. I think he's been, I think he's absolutely incredible. The only thing I feel as though he's got going against him is in him is that he's a bit short. Uh, I think he's like I don't I think he's five foot nine, five foot ten. I could be wrong. Don't quote me. But, um, yeah, you know, historically, you know, you need to be six foot two at least, really, to be, you know, a main event guy. I know that there is the Daniel Bryan factor, but, 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 but you know, it's a bit of a shame because I feel as though if he was on ma mainstream TV and he was allowed to do what he wants to do, you know, how, his, how he wants to portray his character, then I feel as though P. Dunn could really be one of their big stars potentially and of course the fact that he's British as well and he's from the Midlands is all you know extra sweetener to the whole deal but 
Anyway, I feel as though we are coming towards the end of this one because we're almost at 15 minutes. So I'm just going to leave it there. Leave me your thoughts, comments, queries down below in the description. And if there is anything you want me to talk about on this podcast, do let me know and I'll consider it for the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody, and good night.